Yo, ready or not, kid, they gonna move on us, and we gotta get prepared. We gotta get the forces together, man. We gotta get our family together. Ready or not, man. Ready or not, they gonna move on us. So I tell you what, better safe than sorry. Let's be with it. Today my radiator is messed up pretty bad. I got a hole in the bottom of it. And look at that. I just found a quarter. See that? Quarter. Alright, well, I have a hole in the bottom of my radiator. About the size probably of this quarter. When we take it out, we can actually see what it looks like. Alright. Now, to get to the radiator and Taurus, you have to actually rip out the grill, both headlights, this casing, and then exposes the radiator. Now, I'm not doing this video as an instructional video, and uh, I hope you can accept my apologies if it's a little shaky, or if I'm talking a little fast, or it's kind of hard to understand me. This is my very first YouTube video, so... I just figured I'd do something for you guys to show you guys that you guys can do something for yourself. You know, if you have the ambition, the biggest thing with these kind of jobs is that you actually have the willingness to do it yourself. You can see right over here. See that? It's a radiator I picked up from the junkyard for fifty dollars. They sell that brand new in the store for two hundred and forty seven dollars. I got it from a junkyard for fifty bucks. I had to take it out myself, but you know, I just saved two hundred dollars, you know. And uh, overall this this job is gonna save me about about six hundred dollars in labor and material if I brought this to a mechanic. You can see what I have over here? my repair manual, step-by-step -step instructions on how to fix whatever I need to do with pitches. And while I have the headlamp lamps out, I'm actually going to restore, I'm going to restore my lenses that actually cost about $60 in the store. And uh, we're going to see how that works and I'll show you guys how that turns out for my tools. I don't have much as you can see. You know, my, uh, my bench is actually a uh, grill, a grill case, you know, a grill holder, and a piece of plywood. Alright. So there's the setup. And again, this isn't for instructional purposes. This is only to show you that this actually can be done. You can do things on your own. Alright. So wish me luck. And as I go through it, I'll take more pictures and I'll record more. Alright. Thanks, guys. Bye. As you can see, I've already taken everything out of the car, and uh, most of the parts are on the ground. There's the fender and the uh, cover right there. There's the old radiator. There's the new. There's the cavity. I'm putting everything back together right now. So there you go. I got it all put back together. You can see. Honestly, it really wasn't even that bad. It looked bad, but it wasn't. A, uh, you can see. See these right here. Hey, there was 15 of those. Five of these. Right there. Five of those. The headlamps. Two bolts. One bolt. Same thing on this side. Two bolts, one bolt. A couple bolts underneath. A uh, that gave me access to the to the radiator. The hardest part about getting the radiator out was uh, was just because it was so cramped. Because this is uh, it's a full size car, but you know, I got I got some big old meat hands. So I mean, get my hands and everything, getting it behind things. You know, so they put some of the hoses in some messed up places, but. But you get your hands on those, you get those off. Hey, uh, one thing I did find out, if you're, uh, if you are going to be doing something like this, is if you look down here on the radiator itself, right? See 
that? Right here and right here is the transmission lines. All right, and uh, you know if you go to AutoZone or you go to you know wherever you're gonna go and uh, you ask them you know the best way to get out. Not everybody that works at AutoZone or uh, Advanced Auto Man knows what they're talking about or done the jobs themselves. I mean, you got to remember sometimes when you walk in those kind of places. I mean, a lot of those people are just there to get a job. What I found out though is that you know a lot of people told me to actually take this connection off the radiator. Don't do that. If you can help it, especially if you go to a junkyard on these types, not all types, but on this type, a uh, there was actually this plastic clamp. See it? inside the fitting. See it? And that was screwed in here. Here's your transmission line. This is what it looks like. See it? And that was actually sitting inside. Sitting inside like that. Alright. Now, if you can just... That's how it's going to look to you. Now, if you get a junkyard model, if you don't want to chase around trying to find these parts, what you can actually do is, uh, you know, be careful when you take these lines, lines out. And if, and if you can get them out intact like this, even if it's cut from the rest of the car, what you can do is, you just take a flathead screwdriver. Alright, you see it? You can take a flathead screwdriver and actually pry that out of it with... they're still attacked, all right? Now, there's actually a tool that you can use for this, but if these are bent, th this is what you can do. Hey, you take a flat-ass screwdriver, you pry that out of there, all right? You just want to keep working it out. And what's going to look like when you're done, sorry, I'm holding the camera and doing it at the same time, so it's just be cool. It'll look like that. We got the clip in it. Well, sitting inside the radiator of your car, I'm talking about now. After you pry it out to keep your old transmission lines intact, you pry that out of there while it's still inside your car, and you just pull it out and you move it away. All right. Now you don't have to get a wrench in there. It's a really cramped space. That will come out. You'll save, you know, a good half an hour. Some frustration and the radiator itself would be easier to get out, all right? So what, essentially what you're doing is that you wanna, and the reason why you wanna pry those out slowly in the beginning of the one that you get from the junkyard is so that you don't have to hunt this little plastic piece down. You can just take it, put it back into the, uh, back into the, jun the junkyard model, all right? And uh, you can take your, uh, your old connections that are still sitting on your car and put them right in. It's a lot, to me, it's a lot easier. It worked out a lot better. So I just I might might just include that for you. All right. Now there's the old radiator. You know the hole wasn't really the size of a quarter, but uh, it was pretty bad. You can actually see the wear on it. You know the groove marks, the cuts. You know it looks like a lot of debris got in there. I mean it was pretty bad, but it wasn't as bad as a quarter. Um, there is the old one though. Um, now what's funny is that I'm, I'm actually looking this over, and I was going to bring it back to the junkyard and just throw it away, but what I think I might do is, uh, the, the housing itself, the radiator case, the radiator core, that's what's busted, but the, the fittings and the, the, you know, the, you know, the hose lines and everything, those seem to be fine. So what I might do is I might actually save this and get a book on, uh, fixing radiators, and I might just give it a go to actually try to fix the radiator. Now if I can fix the radiator, what I might do is later on, I might just take it out and put it back in just to see if it actually works. You know, because once you do it once, you can do it again, and it gets easier every time. Um, 